Today I turned 36, I have a nine figure business, I have two kids, and here are my 12 lessons I would tell myself if I was in my 20s. Number one, don't chase money and instead chase being right. Let me explain. Growing up, I was like everybody else. I wanna make as much money as possible. I wanna be rich, I wanna make money. So you're just so focused on figuring out what business am I gonna do, is it gonna work? You start one, it doesn't work. You start the other one, it's not this one. And you're just thinking, how's it ever gonna work out? So you're constantly chasing this idea of, I need to make money. When it all changed for me was when I started to chase being right. And as an entrepreneur, you essentially are always trying to come up with an idea, a concept, a hypothesis, which you are then trying to prove. And if you do end up proving it, you end up getting paid. For me, this was very simple. 2016, 17, 18, I realized social media is growing. I wanted to prove to myself that I think people online can sell to other people because of social media. And I went out to prove myself right. And as soon as I did, I ended up making money and I ended up launching my business at the back of that. So fundamentally, stop chasing money as the thing that's gonna prove that you are gonna be successful. If you start chasing the feeling of being right, you'll end up having way more success in life. Number two, write down your weaknesses and try to turn them into skills. For me, growing up, in your 20s, there's so many things you actually are not good at. It could be your understanding of finances, it could be public speaking, it could be how organized you are, like whatever your actual weaknesses are, you have to be honest with yourself and write them down. Then you gotta start working on how do I turn them into skills. Most people in the 20s, they essentially just don't wanna do the things because of all the messaging in the world today, they're saying if you, if you don't wanna do something, you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't push yourself. Fundamentally, I believe the opposite. You should write down exactly the things that you need to improve about yourself, i.e. your skills, and actually start working on building those skills. That is the number one way for you to get ahead in life. And when you get to my age, that you'll be in a place where you're happy with your life and what you're doing. So it's essential you start to really work on yourself by building your skills. The number one difference between someone who's ahead of you or someone that's been doing it for 10 years is that they managed to build a lot of skills and accumulate that experience and knowledge by building skills and doing stuff. So the sooner you realize your weaknesses and turn them into skills and actually get good at that stuff, the faster you'll be able to then get success in whatever thing you want to pursue in life. Number three, and this is one of my personal favorites, which is having zero expectations of others. You know, years and years ago, I realized that the only time I would ever feel unhappy, sad or angry or not myself, or anxious, any of those things which you never want to feel, was because I was expecting something to happen a certain way, and it didn't, and that made me feel that way. So I came with this thinking that I should have zero expectations of others. It's only when you expect a friend to be calling you and they don't, then you're upset. It's only when you expect your parents to be paying for something, and if they didn't, then you're upset. It's only when you expect your employees or people to do stuff and when it doesn't happen, then you're upset. So by having zero expectations, and it's probably not the nicest way to think of the world and other people. Essentially, you're thinking the worst of everybody. And in that case, there's nothing someone can do that will ever really upset you. And it means you, you kind of protect yourself from outside noise, outside points and outside views, which gives you this complete freedom mentally to then do what you wanna do. And that's probably my single biggest like personal thing that I've done that has changed my life to leave my job and build a business which did $18 million last year is that I am free because I don't have the expectations of others driving me to do certain things in my life which are just not needed. Number four piece of advice would be that you should always say yes. I find it funny that all over social media people say the power of saying no and you should say no, you should protect yourself, protect your time, really focus on yourself. But the truth is in your 20s, you actually don't know that much. So the power of saying yes is that you will open yourself up to new experiences, new people and new things which will then lead to things happening. I'll give you an example. I have raised money for my business and I was invited to a Christmas party once it was freezing cold in London, it was like minus four, it was snowing, and I was like, I should not be going to this, right? It's a waste of my time, I don't wanna to go to this party, and I didn't even know anyone really, someone a bit further away. A far friend essentially called me to it, and I still went to it. And I ended up going to this party, I ended up meeting who would then become an investor of mine who was worth, a guy worth like 700 million, because he needed some help 
And in the conversation, I, I, my background was accounting, so I could help them. Next week, I ended up going to his house. I ended up helping him and his wife on the, some accounting issue that they had. And just like that, he ended up being my first investor in my business, only because I said yes to going to this party, which I never would have done if I followed the rule of protect yourself, protect your time, work on yourself. Because in your 20s, you want to make sure you are maximizing your chance of success. So and the more people you meet, the more things you do, the more uncomfortable things you put yourself in, you will find the chance of success. Number five is that you don't need a five year plan. The truth is so many people I meet even today, they'd be like, so what's my plan for the next five years? And I'm 36 now. And I still say the same thing that I said when I was 21. I have no idea. You are probably so worried about your next five years and how you're going to grow and where you want to get to in your life that it actually cripples you from even getting started. And that's what happens with most people. You should only have a short term plan because that will give you the agility and will give you the confidence to go after it because what's the worst that could happen? If it's only take me three months to try something new, to do the thing that I'm avoiding, it's very different. But if you think, but in my five year plan, if I was to do this, then what would happen? I'll give you an example. So a lot of the people that work for me, they've been with me now for five, six years. But when they first joined working with myself, they never would have thought this is where we would get to. So if they had a five year plan of one day starting their own business or doing something else, they never would have joined and worked with me. But instead, because they were thinking how I think, well, there's a chance here for us to do this thing and let's see if it succeeds. If it does, then from there, naturally, the next thing, next thing, next thing starts to layer up. So essentially you start here and you start to layer up and you'll end up finding this success because you weren't trying to get to here in the first place. People are so stuck down here because they want it to be the perfect journey for them and the perfect five year plan that they've created and you just don't need one. So think short term, execute and focus on doing things and getting them done and just don't worry about your life and the next five years, it will work out for itself. Number six is that stop following generic advice. Like when I was young, I did the thing that everybody does. I read, I read the books, I would, I would listen to people's shows, I would listen to all the advice in the world because I thought that's the way for me to learn, right? I'm trying to improve myself, self-development, personal development. I need to consume information from people that have been there and done it, from mentors, from books. I always love reading people's biographies and saying what, can, what lessons can I learn in there. And what I realized was how much that was actually just confusing me even more so because it's all just generic. You have to realize that someone's written a book or someone's putting some advice out there. In most cases, they have thought of a, a very structured way to give this piece of advice um, so you know it performs well. Fundamentally, what you should do instead is start looking at the deeper, real reason that person or that strategy or that tactic or that thing actually works. Ultimately, don't take surface level advice and, and start acting on that start to look for the deeper, real root cause of something actually being a success. It could be a favorite brand of yours, it could be a favorite creator of yours. Anything that you're seeing that you think is successful and you wanna be like that one day, you gotta look at the inner workings of why that happened. I'll tell you about myself, right? I managed to build a very successful business. On the front, people may, you may think of very different reasons. Fundamentally, it was timing because I was early versus most of the world. And so if you were to do the same thing that I'm doing today, it just wouldn't work in the same way because of timing. So you just, you need to have the full context when trying to emulate someone's success, tactics, or general business advice, and don't just take people's advice and try to implement it straight away. It wouldn't actually help you to get to where you want to get to. Number seven, and this is another personal one, but more so for my business journey. You'll hear a phrase people say that don't fix it if it's broken. But the truth is, and this is for anyone that's watching who you know, has a business or they're doing very well in a certain job, etc. When things are going so well, you don't want to break that. You don't want to change that. And one of the biggest lessons I've learned being 36 now and being in business for 10 years is that even if something is going well, you should still trust your instinct to do the things that you really want to do. Like for me, that has meant we have a client that, um, you know, is making us money and things are going really well. But fundamentally, I knew that this thing that we're doing is not good for the business. Like I had it in my inner feeling, my gut instinct, but I was ignoring it because I don't want to break this thing that's working because it's still making us money. So it's something to really look out for. And if I was to advise myself, I would be saying, 
just deep down trust your inner voice in your head and just really do that because you don't want to have the regret that I do sometimes feel today, I would say 20%, which is that I should have done this and that at certain times and I didn't because I didn't want to break the thing that's working. And for me, that thing that was working was, was the business itself. Like my business has grown every single year from the first year I started my business, which is an insane thing to achieve. It's been eight years of year on year growth, more revenue, more profit every single year. And you don't want to break that. But I know that if I did listen to my inner voice, if I did do the things I really wanted to do deep, deep, deep down, I probably would have been, we would have grown faster and been a bigger business by today. So that's what I would tell myself if I was in my 20s. Number eight is that you need to understand that 98% of people generally are just wrong. There's so much power in knowing that in a group setting or when someone is saying something or someone has an opinion on something, most likely that's coming from very less factual information and it's something someone just heard. It's a very thing to be careful of that, you know, it could be your customers, clients, family members, whoever, people will hear something and that turns into an opinion. And if that opinion is well received, now all of a sudden that becomes a strong opinion and they will be saying to everybody, this thing is how it is. So you have to be mindful of that because very easily, it's almost like misinformation in your own life um, can take over your life because you start believing all these different things that people have told you, when in reality, a lot of that was just made up. So you start living in this bubble of fake information and it will, you, it will drown your ability to actually move forwards in life. And that's why you see so many people who generally believe, right, that I can't succeed because the government is not gonna let me, or I can't do this because of this. And all those reasons that exist in your head, it's just because you believe what other people are telling you. If you honestly, you know, just always assume everybody is wrong and they are lying, you will naturally start to not let that subconsciously change the direction of your own thinking and your own path and what you want to do. And you'll start to, again, once again, have that freedom that I said earlier to actually do the things that you really want to do in your life. Number nine, and again, this is something the opposite of what people will tell you not to do. So I believe you should be following the trends that you see online. A lot of people say that you should stick true to yourself, do what you really want to do, don't jump on trends. And if I was talking to the 21 year old me, I would be saying jump on every single major industry trend you can find. The reason is because that's how you capitalize on what's happening in the world. You don't do that by sitting around being idle focusing on the thing that you really want to do, which probably has come from whatever you've been following or listening or thinking about historically. But the thing that's in front of you is the opportunity. So what I mean by that is, just like with anything, when TikTok first came out, if you did start using it, where would you be today? When podcasts first came out, if you did jump on it, what would you do today? In 2018, if you did start your Instagram profile, start posting every day, where would you be today? All the things that were like trends, nothing that I really want to do, it's not for me, I don't want to be on camera, I don't want to do this, all these things, all the reasons. The truth is, you have the first movers and everyone else laughs at them. It happens every single time. The people are like, hey, buy Bitcoin, whatever, everyone laughing at them, now the same people that will be buying at you know 10 times the price. It happens almost with everything. That a first mover advantage is one of the biggest ways you can actually move your life forwards. But in order to do that it means you actually have to be awake and watching the world and the trends and realizing market trends. I don't mean trend as in the latest song that you want to dance to on TikTok. I mean trend as in the market trend, as in the thing that is happening. So for me, I've absolutely transformed my life because I saw the trend of social media in days where Instagram was used to only upload pictures of your dogs and family. No one was using it for business in 2014. I left my job in 2014 to start essentially building a business at the back of Instagram that these people that are gonna get big on Instagram, I'm gonna help them sell products online, digital and physical, that happened to be true. I've made $100 million and helped my clients sell $300 million, only all because I jumped on the trend at that time. So the power of realizing that, then I'm blessed to have built a business which we're constantly jumping on trends, whether that's when mobile apps became bigger or when content became bigger or new types of content came. Right now, it's TikTok shop. It is, you know, by far, 
the greatest opportunity for anyone that's in e-commerce today, but people are still like oblivious to it and just pretending it doesn't exist when it's absolutely crazy. And the, the amount of conversion rate, return on ad spend, every single metric is blowing web and other channels out of the water, but people are not gonna look at it because you are like, no, I wanted to build a Shopify store, so that is what I'm gonna do, because that was my goal. Believe in yourself, focus on yourself, my own goals, cut out the noise, say no to everybody, this is it, I'm only doing this. And you're gonna miss out in the opportunity that's in the market, so don't do that. Number 10 is that you have to actually start managing your time. For the longest time, I would just wake up, work the hardest I possibly can, and basically do it again the next day. In that, I'll find time to eat, find time to go to the gym, etc. And I did live my life like that, meaning that I'm just pushing as hard as physically possibly can. But a few years ago, I realized the power of managing your time, as in through your calendar, is it actually having time blocks on the different things you wanna do in your day. And because like that, you can ensure the things that are the most important to the success in your life, you are doing. So that could be phone call with your parents, it could be going to the gym, it could be three hours of outreach emails, it could be two hours of YouTube filming. Whatever those things are important to you, that's how you can ensure it gets done. When people say I don't have time to do something, I always think, no, you're just not good at managing your time. And I know that's like a cliche thing to say, but I don't understand why people are not mapping out the day and you can still put four hours of, you know, hanging out with my friends, but just put it in there. So then you know you're doing that. And also then subconsciously, you know, the things that you really enjoy, if that's Netflix, if that's reading a book, if that's going to the gym, you can put that in your calendar because then you can objectively look at it and be like, okay, I'm doing my things that I find fun five times. So then let me put in the things that I said earlier, right? My insecurities, my fears, the things I need to improve about myself. Make, so let's make sure that's in my calendar. Like that every single week. I have this saying, if you win your day, you essentially will win the week, win the month, and you'll actually win in life. Because fundamentally, that's all it takes. I know that's such a simple way of thinking of it, but it really is. If each day you are doing the most important things that you want in your life, and that could be family, it could be fitness, it could be your spiritual, and it also is the things you need to do to drive your career or business forwards. So if you map out your day, every single day, and be looking at it holistically, would be the number one thing I could tell you in your 20s for you to start executing at a higher level, at a higher output than most people. Because a lot of times people ask me this question, right? Like today I have a team of 100 plus, we have four offices in the world, we have over 60 different clients, and I'm also a co-founder of like five other businesses. How do I, and I have two kids, and how do I manage all of that comfortably? And I'm not stressed, I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty chill. And I managed to do all of that because I know how to manage my time really well. Number 11 is that you have to build your personal brand. Look, I'm in the business of building personal brands. I've helped some of the biggest people in the world build millions of subscribers and build multi-million dollar business in the back of it. And if you're in your 20s today and you are watching this, I don't care if you work at McDonald's, you're an Uber driver, you're an entrepreneur, or you're working in a role somewhere for some company, in any of those situations, there is one way you can be more successful is that if you have a personal brand. It is the greatest opportunity of our lifetime, of the lives of this century, for you to create content, to connect with people because you can do it for free and the power that that will give you. The things that I have seen that having a personal brand gives you is insane. One of my clients' dad was abusive to their mom their whole life. She built a personal brand, paid for her mom's divorce, bought her mom a house and changed her mom's life. The things you can do, and you have the power of doing that, but if you just made a personal brand, meaning start creating content, start speaking, start sharing who you are as a person to the world, you just don't know what could happen. And the reason is, because if you just take one moment and you maybe you have a dream of starting a clothing brand, maybe you have a dream of starting some SaaS business, whatever you have today, how are you ever gonna get customers? you're gonna to have to pay for advertising, which is expensive. And no matter what you do, if you had a personal brand, if you work on it in all your 20s, let's say for 10 years, and you finally start a business when you're 30, you will have the ability to get customers, make money so fast because you'll have an audience there waiting to be monetized. So if I were to tell you one thing, and if you can take one thing away from this video, start building a personal brand.
And the last tip I would give to myself if I was in my 20s is that you have to be honest with yourself. I think so many people are consistently lying to themselves when you are by yourself. One of the biggest things I've, I ever do, I'm not re I don't really do many affirmations or I don't, I don't meditate or anything like that. For me, what's always worked is sitting in silence by myself and thinking to myself where I'm actually being honest to myself, where I'm actually saying, I said I was gonna post content, but I've not been doing it. I said I was gonna do this and that, but I've not been doing it. I said that I'm gonna go to the gym more, I've not been doing it. I said I'm gonna call my parents more, but I've actually not been doing it. Like the things that you would not actually say out loud about yourself, you know, I actually was not nice to this person, or that day I was mean to this guy for this reason. The things that you know you need to improve yourself on, you need to actually say it to yourself. You don't need to say it to other people. I don't think you need to say it to a therapist or whoever else. You just need to say it to yourself alone, like deeply. And that gives you the subconscious like strength to be like, I'm gonna change those certain things about myself to improve. So I'm not gonna come up with an excuse to watch three hours Netflix. But I know whilst I was doing that, I could have actually done this other thing. I could have scripted a video. I could have sent more applications. I could have sent more emails. And it's so hard because Everything in your body will be telling you, I deserve to relax now, right? It's been a hard day. I deserve to be doing this thing, or I deserve to eat more bad food, or I deserve to do this. Like you are, everything is telling you, 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 you need to be, you want to do this. For you to physically not do that and do the thing that you know you need to do in your mind is the thing to follow. And there's been so many times I have been in that situation that if I was talking to myself right now, I would say, just do it. Don't, don't be weak, don't fall for it. And you know, just do the thing that needs to be done because in the future, your future self will thank you for doing that. I hope these 12 lessons were useful for you and you can start implementing some of them so you can find success, happiness in your life. Thank you for watching.